History loves winners. You know, the stories of great achievements by brilliant people. But actually, almost all of these stories are missing their most important detail. To see what that is, we have to start by looking not at history's winners, but at its losers. Their stories are all over the history books, if you know where to look. For example, we take something like The Last Supper and we say to ourselves, this is the work of a genius. But actually, the guy who painted it, Leonardo da Vinci, was kind of a loser. He was born in 1452, just outside of Florence, and it didn't take long for people to realise he could draw. At the age of 14, he gets an apprenticeship with one of the great painters of the time. So far, so good. But Leonardo has a problem. He's got these big ideas for these epic masterpieces he wants to create, but they're so ambitious, he can never get them finished. For example, in 1481, he gets a gig to paint a fresco called The Adoration of the Magi. This is a sketch he made for it, and you can count here 66 people. There's 11 animals, including some kind of horse battle going on over there, and then there's all those stairs. No surprise, he can't get the thing finished. Now, he's a freelancer at this point, and if you're freelance, you'll know that not delivering to a client is bad for business. Not only does he not get paid for his work, now no one will hire him. Which brings us to this unfortunate guy, another one of history's losers maybe. It was grim work, but if you could draw, you could make 40 florins or so painting dead criminals. And this is all the work that Leonardo da Vinci can get. And to rub it in, all the other big painters in Florence have been invited to the biggest gig of the time, to paint the Sistine Chapel. Leonardo's invite never came. Now here's what I think's really interesting about this. At this low ebb in his life, Leonardo had just turned 30. It's funny, isn't it, how when you're young, you look at 30 like it's some kind of terrible milestone, like if you're not on the right path by now, you're in trouble. And that's when we live twice as long. I mean, imagine how Leonardo felt. For him, 30 was pretty much middle age. Thing is, I could tell you loads of stories like this. At 30, this guy was sweeping the floor in a laboratory for another scientist who today hardly anyone's ever heard of. This guy was a mid-ranked soldier with a drinking problem. At 30, he's living with his mum and dad, and this guy's bankrupt. And as for him, well, you know who he is, but did you know that at 30, he'd been trying to make it as an actor for 10 years, but could still only get bit parts on TV, I'm sorry. and was working as a carpenter to pay the bills. But look, this isn't just about late starters. I think these stories are trying to tell us something about what it means to be creative and successful today. To see what that is, we need to go from one famous carpenter back to the other one. The Last Supper is a masterpiece, right? Leonardo solved a perspective problem that had confused artists for years just by the way he places Jesus' hands. We can tell who Judas is, not in some obvious way, but in the subtle way he's positioned in the painting. Now, it was also the work that made Leonardo da Vinci. It was his first timeless piece. But here's what's amazing about this. It was finished, wait for it, in 1498. Remember when we left Leonardo painting dead people when he was 30? That was in 1482, 16 years before The Last Supper was finished. In other words, Leonardo da Vinci got his big break when he was 46. That's just how long it takes to get this good at doing something. But it feels like we've forgotten this. You know, these days we're in such a hurry, and I worry we've created a dangerous blind spot in our approach to creativity. But how did that happen, and can we do anything about it? The answer lies with this American TV star and his talking skeleton. And that's where we're heading in part two. Everybody, night, night, everybody.